the shutter all back in the body the diaphragm spring tension correctly and uh, you can check that by looking through the back of the camera you set the shutter speed to the highest speed in this case a 500th of a second set the aperture to the smallest setting in this case f22 and if you look through from the back of the camera as you release the shutter you should see that the diaphragm is shut right down that it's closed right down to its smallest setting you can judge that fairly well there's no um, percentage in having winding up the spring tension beyond that point uh, because you'll just end up uh, buggering the spring really you just can't get an infinite amount of tension out of it if you overstress it it won't be good so I'm cleaning this lens up this is our central group and this is the innermost surface the surface that faces the shutter blades I'm cleaning here at the moment I'll put that in place on the shutter and then I'll clean the outer surface the surface that faces the front the surface facing our front component which of course I haven't have yet to clean and fit and what did I do with that wonderful tool I'd made there it is just tighten that up and then I've got to clean that glass surface because that is probably the worst one on the camera just blow any loose dust off it yeah this is um, a mass of fungus and that cleaned up quite well so I'll do that again That looks good. So the front component. Well, this is uh, going to get rid of all this old grease first from the helical here. It's pretty nasty so usually I go around the outside edge trying to get all the grease away that I can from there before I tackle this very back edge where some of the grease has almost certainly leaked over and of course that gets onto the surface of the glass at that point so you want it as well away from that glass as possible because getting the glass clean is always a trial getting grease off glass is never easy you always end up well not always but you often end up with a piece of glass that's beautifully clean except that you'll notice that there's a tiny rainbow smear perhaps only visible at one um, in, when you looked at it in one direction it's certainly enough to be annoying now this is a multi-start thread they can be a challenge to get started patience is required don't rush it don't force it 
you bugger up that multi-start thread, it's really difficult to get it back working again. Alright, that's in there. I haven't lubricated it yet, and I'm not going to remove it from there to lubricate it. I'm just going to back it out most of the way. Put a few spots of uh, helical grease around the outside, and then put it back, screw it back in. I'm not going to fight for that more than I have to. But the glass surface needs to be cleaned. And this um, is the most obvious glass surface on the camera. It's also the glass surface most prone to damage from atmospheric contaminants and fingers. Yeah, that front surface doesn't look wonderful. It's damaging the coating. There's a lot of grime around the inside edge of that lens. See, I think it's corrosion, really. I'll wipe that clean. This is the mount I'm dealing with here more than the glass. You can see the corrosion there. Clean the glass again. Yes, those marks on the glass, they are never ever going to go away. Coating marks, uh, typically you blame them on things like uh, splashes, uh, particularly salt spray. You always blame salt spray for things like that, whether it's true or not. Any other damage on the camera that could be attributed to salt water, then any of the marks on the lens, oh yes, it was salt spray did that. And it may be true. It may well be true. If this lens was started in the right position, very likely that this piece here will be in the right position. I'm looking at the state of this, it's got one, two, it's got three notches in it, three little holes or divots which would accept the lock screws from here. Very likely they did at exactly the one point. It's also got three more which look like they were put in at a different time in its life. I'm going to clean this ring. We'll just check and see what happens with the focus. It may be I want to restart that lens in a different position on the uh, multi-start thread to get it um, position correctly. It'll certainly be the case. I don't know how many starts that thread had. It was certainly more than three and if they're not symmetrically arranged then it's only going to fit play nicely in one position. Oh, this is all very grimy stuff, this. I didn't get the impression that this was a, uh, a dearly beloved family piece passed down through the generations, so it may well be that the current owner doesn't know much about its history. And isn't all that bloody enamoured of it, if, unless I can make it go nicely. 
Right. Hmm. That's the stop. Where is infinity on that? Of course, I've got a reflex finder, so I can decide that. Oh, and it's right there. That's infinity. Right there between where the second S of Zeiss is right at the top of the lens. And if that was there and that was there, where do those screw holes line up? Oh, they pretty much do line up, you know. Not there, it doesn't. Okay. So not in that position. Let's try it in another position. So what was that? Screwed in tight. I've got the A of Carl right at the top. Let's back it up once to the next notch. And restart it. Always easier said than done. So now we've got nine. Nine of the serial number pointing to the top. And at infinity it looks like what? Infinity looks like that. And we have that would be up against the stop. No, nope. that's no good. So we've got a big sector here that's cut out where there's no screw through there. Well, that's the uh, first half of my task over really for this particular camera. Now I need to strip the top of it down clean the prism, um, clean the screen really, the prism you probably can't do an awful lot with and then that can uh, go back to its owner after that once it's all finished with. I want to see if I can sort out that meter window there. It actually looks better in, in the camera view than it does in, in person. It's pretty opaque. These rotating latches here are a little bit uh, rough in the way they work. I'm going to see if I can remove, unscrew these. There's a little special screw in the centre there. And just, just clean them out. I think they're probably a bit, they may have dried up old grease in there. There's probably dust and other rubbish. But if I remove the screw from here, I should be able to disassemble this and hopefully get it all back together again when I'm done. So that from the outside, and those two washers, this from the inside. Okay. I'll clean these parts with a bit of naphtha, and see if it'll go together nicely, and just work a bit smoother. Let's just clean these components up a bit. This is the inside components. Bit of uh, marking on there like corrosion. If there is, it's quite light. The outside components. Certainly a bit of uh, dust and grit involved here. Yeah. yeah. A bit of corrosion there, I think. A 
And here, what have we got here? We've got a shaped washer, spring-loaded washer that bears on the lever. Let's make sure all these components are clean. Just looking at those hinge pins and making sure everything is in place correctly there. Now give these springs all a light white with some synthetic grease. And I'm doing this not so much just to lubricate them as to uh, prevent any further corrosion. Yeah, that will sit down on there. See if that will pop into the case okay. This um, spring loaded washer arrangement here, this is, I can see this is going to be awkward. It's got two flats on it and it only wants to sit down when it's half compressed. Here the disc component game. That disc went in there. Like that. That spacer must sit in here and engage with those notches. And then the screw goes in the top. could really do with a nut driver of the appropriate shape for this thing because I can see that it's going to be awkward to get in place. That looks just a little bit large for my pin vice to hold on to. Mm, yeah, that's awkward.
I'll bring you back when I get that thing screwed back in. Well, that's that's vastly improved. I'm very pleased with that. Now I'll have to do its mate. Wish me luck. Next move here is to remove the top cover of this uh, Contaflex. There's a few things I've got to achieve. I've got to get that viewfinder lens off the back. Remove the rewind knob, which I can see is held on with a screw here. There's a collar under here, which presumably holds the whole top cover down over the rewind post. And there are three screws hold the advance knob in place. Between those, I think that should come apart, but my immediate problem is dealing with this. Now that unscrews. But have I got a tool that will get onto that? It looks a little bit um, corroded around the edges, so I suspect that, that thread is not going to want to play nicely. I'll have to find a spanner. I've tried a friction tool, that certainly didn't shift this. Just checking the size of that. Basically that's 18 millimeters the diameter across there. And I most certainly do not have a spanner to suit that. I'm going to have to make a spanner, I think. The alternative would be to cut a notch in here to engage a tool. But um, I'm reluctant to put anything on there that might pass as a sharp edge because some poor bugger's going to put this up to their eye. So that's pretty much out as an option. An alternative might be to drill a tiny hole either side down in here and here where I could engage at all but I think it's just probably just as easy for me to make a spanner that will uh, grip that diameter and unscrew that how it should come out is like this this is another contact uh, Contaflex 2 and that's what the eyepiece looks like. This one's got its trim ring on the back. That one lacks it. In fact most of them lack that trim ring. But it should just unscrew from the body casting. Now the body kit, the casting here is a bit unusual. It's cut away on both sides. So it's a, a bit entertaining getting the, the thread started here and not cross-threaded. It's easy to get it cross-threaded. And I'm hopeful that on that particular camera that it hasn't been cross-threaded because if it has that will means that it's been forced on. Yeah that's running on nicely now. It's been forced in place and there is it's going to be that much tougher to get it to unscrew. Right, I'll be back once I've got a tool. Okay, it's about an hour and a half later. Just the usual mine and machine shop nuisances. Let's get this to go. Okay, well that span is working fine. I'd like to say it's a very pretty example, but it's not. It was just made out of some scrap that I happened to have. And uh, I had some 50mm by 3mm aluminium strap. It's roughly 2 inches by an eighth. Okay, well that's that little nuisance out the way. I can carry on with the rest of this job. If I can just find all the stuff that I need. It's 
start here. Will this get me where I want to go? Or does this just hold two parts together of the... No, that did come off. It's got a little ball there. And if I remember correctly, that job of the ball... Yeah, it runs in a little track and there's a tiny little detent spring there too. They're very small. And like anything very small, it's very easily lost. So the ball, the detent ball, its spring, and the retaining screw, and this ring here was from the finder. I'll put those very carefully over there. The advance knob. Three screws. They're usually uh, pretty grimy. Um, where they are, deeply recessed in this knurled knob, they tend to gather up all the dead skin cells and uh, things of that nature. That's the three screws. Now, yeah, these parts. See what wants to come off as a, in a bunch. See if I can lift them off piece by piece. The knob. A little knurled setting ring for the frame counter. A wavy washer. A broad plain steel washer. The frame counter number ring. The shutter release button. And a spring underneath the shutter release button. This is going to have to come off. So in the uncocked position, the gear is over towards the front there. I'll keep that in mind. Points towards the lens. Three screws from the top. since I've had one of these apart. That comes off. There's a shim washer underneath it there. Chopped away on one side to clear that gear. That'll have to be straightened out a bit. I've made a mess of that. One retaining screw there. At the other end of the top plate, we've got this retainer here. Let's see if we can encourage that loose. And here I've got a pair of what used to be crimp lug pliers, but uh, no, not crimp lug pliers circlet pliers but a long long time ago I ground the tips down to make them into something else unscrew this retainer Or not? Yes, it is. Okay. So these parts. We've got the retainer collar. The fill.
film speed selector thing here with the thing with the film speeds marked on it. This ring here, that's got the actual film speeds on it. A wavy washer, black steel. This chrome knob here. This dial is set either way depending on whether you have the flap open or closed. Now I'd make a note that, that the green part goes to the outside edge. A washer and a single screw. I'm just checking that against the screw that's at the other end of the camera. It's shorter than the screw that held the other end of the cam the top down. This, I think, should loosen up the top cover. Let's find out if it does. Oh, it's pretty um, gritty feeling as this lifts up. It's coming up. Okay. Alright, well here we've got dead foam rubber that originally sat around the top of that meter to keep the dust out. That's all crumbling, turned to shite. The meter window, that's supposed to be nice clear plastic. As you can see, it's really just smeared up. Now that looks to me like someone's attacked that with solvent and it didn't like it. I'll remove that and polish it. That should come back. Not that I expect that the meter is accurate or even vaguely useful, but who wants a camera where you can't see things? So um, I'll get that sorted out. Something fell off. What was that piece there? Now that's a follower from something. It sits on something. What does it sit on? It was a spacer. That's a spacer that supports the top cover. And it sat here at the end of the body. Okay, well that's a grimy mess. I'll start putting these pieces carefully aside in order and I will start cleaning, working on the body. I want to start by removing this uh, decaying foam rubber from inside the top cover. All it is is a powdery mess now, all the uh, plastic's decayed right down. It almost certainly had some sort of, like a cloth backing. A cloth backing like is it like a an old sticking plaster which of course is rock hard now I'll wipe that with a bit of acetone it may or may not want to come loose if it doesn't want to come loose it can probably stay there but I need all that loose stuff off it I could put another piece of foam on there, modern stuff that's not uh, turned to crap yet. Okay, that looks okay. I'll clean up the rest of the top cover. And I'm just using some naphtha here. Now there's sort of corrosion on that inside surface. Um, And particularly around the eyepiece here at the back, or where the eyepiece for the finder would be, there's a lot of dust and rubbish there. So I'll just brush that out with a uh, an old stiff 
paintbrush. I just want all the loose particles out really. I, I'm going to be cleaning the finder up as much as I can and I do not want loose particles of rubbish deciding that they'll come and that they'll shift house as soon as I've finished and uh, move to a nice freshly cleaned viewfinder. So the top cover on the outside here It's pretty grimy around here. It's there's corrosion there. That orange colour you can see there, that's the copper from the brass top cover showing through the chrome. The chrome is basically just corroded away. Or corrosion is or corrosion of the underlying brass has uh, pushed the chrome off. That's just as likely. All this chrome is in um, a fairly poor state. And round here, this is the Film Advance knob end. You'd expect this to be pretty grimy because it's had greasy fingers running round here all the time over the last. I can't remember how old we decided this camera was. About 60 years anyway. Between 60 and 65 years old I would think. But it certainly had its fair share of hard work. That's pretty good. I might um, go and clean that, wash that one. What you can do with top covers, particularly if there's nothing particularly uh, likely to get damaged in them, is clean them in hot soapy water, just using normal dish detergent. And uh, that often is very good. It will remove all sorts of stuff. Very good for removing finger grease and mess of that nature. Let's put the top cover to one side. Have a look at this camera body. I'm going to brush off all the loose dust here first. That's certainly solvent damage. Apart from the top surface, which we can easily see, it's run down under here and that plastic's been melted. Now that tells me that somebody tipped something in there or they've used a swab that was moistened or well, soaked in some solvent that, that the plastic really didn't like. I don't know if I can lift that meter off that body easily. 